I want to really get to understand, Kat, what you've seen, the demand for your services or the worries of your customers. Well, first, thanks very much for, on behalf of Beneficial Bank, having us on today to talk about banking. Financial services is the largest industry in the world, and it fuels every other industry. And we need it to finance the world in which we actually wish to live. So first, what's suggested by the failure of Silicon Valley Bank is that we need to return to stricter regulations as envisioned by the Dodd-Frank Act, which have been watered down by industry lobby ever since. In particular, we need to return to strict regulatory stress testing of all banks over 50 billion in assets, not just those over 250 billion in assets. For instance, Silicon Valley Bank was 220 billion in assets at the time of its seizure. Um, if we had stricter te stress testing, it would attend to four buckets of risk and uh, mitigate them before a crisis occurs. Mm. Those are I can attend. I can address those at any time, Caroline. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that you say all of this because we are getting it. We had news a little bit earlier from the New York Fed, for example, and saying regional Fed banks will adopt policy to public information requests and they're going to implement transparency policy by the end of 2023. Do you think the move for regulation is going to be quick enough, the support coming from the likes of Janet Yellen saying maybe we'll assess whether depositors need more support? Is that enough to secure your own users right now, the depositors, are they being confident? Well, at Beneficial State Bank, we serve the Main Street economy, which is a more resilient banking model. Silicon Valley Bank had a devaluation of its marketable securities portfolio in the rising interest rate environment. It had uh, d stretching out a duration with the slowing of prepayments in that portfolio. If they had to liquidate it, they would have recognized losses that hit capital. They had extreme concentration in their deposit base among startups mm -hmm. and venture capitalists. But is it a community uh, bank not have that too, Kat? Yes. So we've uh, financed Main Street. Uh, we, that means that we're supporting small businesses, fair consumer products, environmentally sustainable companies, nonprofits that are community based, mm. and we have a very sticky deposit base. Uh. We are mission driven, and our depositors love us for many reasons. They don't move in lockstep to flee the bank. We also insure deposits up to our largest deposits with special products, mm. uh, and we have a very strong capital buffer. But what we really need is for the regional commercial banks and the community banks to have higher FDIC limits, more like $10 million, to avoid the flight to subsidy that occurs when everyone goes to the top five banks. I see. And have you been seeing that, therefore? Or have you actually been gaining deposits? Or have you been losing market share to those systemically important lenders? So initially, for instance, the Silicon Valley Bank uh, depositors, especially the startups, were attracted to our mission-driven bank. We're mm. mandated to achieve social justice and environmental well-being as well as being financially sustainable. But then came the uh, cry of their venture backers that they had to go to the top five banks. That's not a flight to safety. It's a flight to subsidy because those banks are too big to fail and we'd have to bail them out. Yeah. If we could allocate FDIC insurance at a higher limit, it would keep deposits in the community banks and the regional commercial banks, which is where we need them to fund an economy that's resilient uh, and supports all Americans. Kat, you are so mission-based, and when you go onto the website, when you understand on, on your Twitter account what your bank stands for, how have you been thinking about diverse founders, people who haven't had access to financing in quite the same way that some others have been able to? Many would say Silicon Valley Bank did just that. They were able to take, well, they took more risky bets, but they backed people perhaps without a large minimum. Are you able to do that and offer that to some founders who are now looking for deeper connections, different financial relationships? Absolutely. So we're dedicated to all of our stakeholders, our, the communities that we serve that are largely low income, our customers that, who are very diverse, our colleagues, uh, the, uh, the public interest and the environment upon which we all depend. This is just a smarter way to bank, to recognize all of the constituencies, but all of the risk areas. Um, so uh, depositors who are seeking a mission fit can also be assured that their deposits are being lent back out uh, in a way that sustains a resilient, equitable economy. 
Um, we do uh, it's fully insure deposits up to very high levels, the biggest deposits that we have. And we are advocates for changing the banking system for good with tighter regulations, higher FDIC insurance, and for instance, the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation, which is an additional regulatory uh, scrutiny uh, since the watering down of Dodd-Frank and the evisceration of the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau. 30 seconds, have you reached out to regulators? Have they been reaching out to you? Um, we're in very uh, close touch with our regulators at all time. We embrace our regulations and our regulators, uh, and we expect that they will have a very good analysis of uh, what exactly happened at Silicon Valley Bank and how we can prevent that from rippling through the system.